Hello, this is Xbox Ahoy, and this is the 19th episode of my Black Ops Weapon Guide. You and Grizz, baby. This time we're covering the third sniper rifle, the L96A1. It's the only bolt action rifle in the game, and is unlocked at level 27. One of the two British weapons in game, the L96A1 is the Land Forces designation for the Accuracy International Precision Marksman, or PM. Adopted in 1982, the L96A1 entered service with the British Armed Forces in 1985. The Precision Marksman went up against a few other potential rifles for the L96 designation in trials, including the Parker Hale M85, PSG-1 and Remington 700. The PM eventually came out on top and became the sniper rifle employed by the British Army. The original PM design was improved in the Arctic Warfare version of the rifle, named for its ability to operate in a wide variety of climates. Available in a large number of different calibers and configurations, such as the Police variant or AWP with its shorter barrel and black furniture, and the Magnum or AWM designed for more powerful cartridges. The Arctic Warfare range is an adaptable family of rifles suited to a large range of roles. Although the AW series are chambered for a variety of calibers, the L96A1 configuration fires the NATO standard 7.62 by 51mm round. Magazine capacity in game is on the smaller end at 5 rounds. Extended mags will take this capacity up to 10. The L96A1 is the most powerful of all the sniper rifles, boasting the largest one hit kill area and dealing more effective damage per shot than any other non-explosive weapon in the game. A shot anywhere to the head, neck, chest, stomach, or even the upper arms will result in a one-shot kill. This means that only a shot to the lower arms or legs will require a follow-up shot. Silenced, the damage profile is identical to the other rifles. You'll need a head or a neck shot to kill. As a bolt action, you will need to chamber a new round manually with every shot. This limits your rate of fire to a maximum of 60 rounds per minute, or one per second. If you interrupt the weapon cycling by sprinting or changing weapons, be warned that you will still need to cycle the weapon before you'll be able to fire again. Recoil is very heavy. When firing, the upward kick will cause you to lose sight of your target momentarily. Given that the bolt action cycling slows your rate of fire, the recoil doesn't harm second shot accuracy but can hurt in cases where you need to aim two shots in sequence. Aim speed is the same as all the snipers. At 400 milliseconds, it's important to stay out of close range gunfights, else you'll be bested by more nimble weapons. Reload is fairly slow, but seldom an issue if you're in a good position and remain mindful of your remaining count. 3.3 seconds is manageable enough. By default, the L96 comes with a scope attached. With moderate zoom and crosshair reticle, it's good enough for a wide variety of situations, but there are some alternatives. The ACOG scope is suited to closer ranged engagements, offering lower zoom and slightly faster aim time. The L96, along with the Enfield, uses the unique British optical attachment, the Suzat scope, with the tritium illuminated obelisk reticle indicating your point of aim. It's functionally identical to the other ACOG sights, the differences are only cosmetic. It may take some time getting used to the reticle. You need to place your target on the white tip of the sight post. Despite being marginally more suited to close range combat, I wouldn't recommend the ACOG. You'll endure a lot of added sway. And being a bolt action, the L96 isn't suited to situations where you might need a fast follow-up shot. The infrared scope marks non-Ghost Pro users bright white, and otherwise behaves in the same way as the default scope. You lose some definition on target, but it can be useful at extreme ranges to highlight an otherwise hidden foe. The fact that there exists a near perfect counter in Ghost Pro, however, means that I wouldn't recommend the infrared scope. The highlighting of enemies isn't that significant a benefit when some can walk right through your scope without detection. The variable scope is probably the most versatile option. Offering three different zoom levels, it's essentially an enhanced version of the default scope. The varying zoom permits you to aim more accurately at almost any range, and over extreme distances the longest focal length will allow you to line up that perfect headshot. It's the wide angle view of the lowest zoom that makes this such a usable optic, however. Being able to see a wider view when aiming will mean you don't suffer from tunnel vision, and this will help alert you to threats that may be obscured when using another scope. I strongly recommend keeping the zoom level low at all times, 
Zoom in when you're at a firing location or when engaging a target at long range, but reset the magnification when on the move. This wider magnification is great for middle range engagements, and is arguably better than the ACOG for slightly closer range sniping. The suppressor will keep you off the minimap when shooting, and permits a total stealth approach with the sniper rifles, while still being capable of dealing a one-shot kill. Unfortunately, you trade a significant portion of your effective damage for this luxury, meaning that your shots will have to be much more accurate. Given that the suppressed snipers have equal effective damage, the L96 is by far the worst choice to use suppressed, as you lose its damage advantage over the semi-automatic rifles. In short, if you want to go suppressed, use the WA2000. Extended mags doubles your ready ammunition count to 10 rounds, meaning that you'll require fewer reloads and can sustain sequential shots for longer. This could be useful in certain situations, but 5 rounds is generally enough, and the reloads are painless enough if you're concealed or in cover. Overall, my preferred attachment was the variable scope. By some margin, it's by far the most versatile optic and it will increase your effectiveness at middle range and extreme range over the regular scope. Versatility is the one thing snipers sorely lack, so the significant increase the Variscope provides will increase your performance dramatically. Our perk loadout is focused on a combination of stealth and mobility. Although I don't recommend the suppressor, positioning is everything with the sniper rifles, and a certain degree of stealth is invaluable when it comes to getting to the perfect spot. Ghost will keep you off the radar, at least until you fire, which means that you're less likely to be accosted when on the move. Ghost Pro will remove the red name that appears over your head, useful should you need to hide. When prone in a good location, most foes will walk right past you unaware, making stealth a useful close range defense on larger maps. The only time you'll attract attention is when you fire, and if you reserve your use of the trigger to times when you're in an advantageous position, this unsilenced fire can work to your advantage, drawing multiple foes into your crosshairs. Our second perk choice is useful when every shot counts, and ensuring accuracy with an unforgiving weapon like the L96 is essential. Hardened, and especially the Pro variation, will enhance the effectiveness of your shots. The penetration benefit is of only marginal effectiveness. Generally speaking, you'll want to ensure a clean, unobstructed shot for a one-hit kill, but it can help in certain situations nonetheless. You'll be able to pierce thin cover more easily, making shooting through windows less of a gamble, and Hardened may even make the difference through thicker cover when shooting an already injured opponent. It's perhaps the pro benefit of Hardened that's more useful. Decreasing your flinch when shot is essential if you find yourself taking fire just before making a shot. When one bullet is all it takes, ensuring it connects is vital. Positioning is key with the sniper rifles, being in an unexpected spot will give you the time needed to line up a lethal shot. Our third perk choice, Marathon, gives us the mobility we need to get to firing positions quicker and otherwise evade close quarter combat. Of course, running recklessly around the map can be detrimental to your health, so some caution and observation is required. But being able to flank the enemy and set up shop over a long sight line can mean that you'll be able to strike from behind and do much damage before your opponent is able to retaliate. On maps such as Array, Marathon is a godsend, allowing you to take the long route around a map more quickly and giving you the edge in the element of surprise. For your secondary, you'll want to take a pistol. It will serve as an adequate close range defense, at least until you can swap it for something more suitable. A single pistol works best here. That way you'll benefit from the quicker drop on your primary weapon and stand more of a chance when taken by surprise. As for grenades, I was using frags and concussion grenades, principally as defensive tools or for clearing out enemies in cover. Claymores make for good accomplices when taking up a static firing position. Place one down to watch your back and you'll be able to rest a little easier, and focus your attention through your scope. When employing the sniper rifles, there's no getting around the fact that they are long-range weapons. The slow aim time and high level of precision required means that you'll be at a disadvantage in the open. That's not to say you'll be unable to kill targets at a closer range. With a carefully placed shot, you're deadly at any distance but care should be taken to avoid any direct confrontation. One way you can play a little more aggressively with the sniper rifles is to employ them in a support role in team games. If you move with your team, hang back and provide accurate fire support, you'll have the close range buffer in your teammates, and with a spot of luck they'll attract the enemy's attention, while you can eliminate them unseen from a little further back. 
If you do find yourself on your own, you may be best falling back to a traditional sniper role, preserving longer sightlines through good positioning and protecting your rear with a claymore. Playing as a lone sniper does demand patience, else you'll wind up exposing yourself to a gunfight outside your comfort zone and wind up getting killed. Whichever tactic you prefer, your accuracy is crucial, and ensuring that your first shot is the kill will prove essential, as the crack of a missed shot will serve as quite the motivation for your opponent to target you with urgency. If you're in a poor position or too close to your opponent, you won't get a second chance. The L96A1 is the most powerful sniper weapon in the game, with the highest potential for a one-shot kill. This means you have to worry less about hitting a target twice, as with most aimed shots you'll see consistent performance. Despite this tolerance, it remains important to be accurate. The slow bolt action is punishing to those who miss their mark. The sniper rifles don't really lend themselves to spray and pray tactics, so the slow fire rate encourages good habits, and will force you to be accurate to find success. It is not an easy weapon to use, but there are few weapons as satisfying when things do go your way. With careful positioning, a clear shot and keen aim, you'll be hidden death, allied to the shadows. One shot, one kill. Thanks for watching, this has been Xbox Ahoy. Join me next time when we'll be covering the next batch of secondaries, starting with the M1911. Until then, farewell.